Good morning all. Today we are going to learn about uh, the interview questions asked in the IBM DevOps round one. So, what are the interview questions faced by me? I'm going to uh, draft it here so that it might be helpful for everyone uh, who are attending an interview uh, for IBM. Either they might expect uh, these questions as well in their interview. So not only this, uh, in the other DevOps interview as well, you might be expecting these kind of questions. So let's get move on. So the first interview question which has been asked uh, is regarding some popular tools for DevOps. So uh, I have answered like uh, whatever the popular tools which I know. So like Jenkins uh, has we used for use it for the continuous integration and then Agios uh, is for the monitoring system. Um, not only Nagios, you can use this Plunk as well but I have not mentioned it here. So whatever the things which has been answered by me I have mentioned here. So Kubernetes and uh, Elasticsearch, Logstack, Kibana, uh, Jenkins, uh, Docker, Ansible, Git, Bitbucket and so on. So moving on to the next question. So why do you think that the version control system is necessary for the DevOps team? So uh, as we all know that the version controls, why do we need the version control system? So the application is all about the code. So if the UI is, uh, if you have any uh, UI related issues or any bug fixes uh, for that, we need to have the code. So in order to track about uh, the code updates, we will be using the version. So version is mandatory for us to track the uh, bug fixes as well as uh, to identify any kind of uh, issues. So in which uh, which commit has been uh, the particular issue has been raised, we can track it through the versioning. So by chance, if the if any bug uh, breaks the application, we would be able to revert it based upon this. Uh, working code base depending upon the versions whatever versions will help us to revert that code to uh, revert that code so also by keeping track of the code commits uh, it will be easy for us to identify the bugs so moving on to the next question so what are the key components of devops so basically the key components uh, of the devops are like uh, as per my knowledge, I have answered this like uh, the continuous integration and the continuous testing, continuous delivery as well as monitoring. So the continuous uh, uh, integration and continuous delivery as every as these four key components might be uh, everyone aware of it. So why do we use the continuous integration and uh, what is the purpose of it and uh, what is the continuous testing and continuous delivery? as continuous monitoring so let's move on to the next question um, like uh, they have asked me uh, mention what instance you have been used for uh, use the what uh, what instance have you used the SSH so basically we use the SSH to log in into the remote machine so I have, I have said like uh, SSH is used to log in into the remote machine and to work on the command line. And not only that, uh, like uh, to to have a communication between the two unsecured networks or uh, two unsecured uh, uh, untrusted hosts over the network. So uh, I have explained it in bit detail here. Like uh, beside this, uh, I have used it in tunneling into the system in order to facilitate the secure encrypted communications between the untrusted hosts over the insecure network. So let's move on to the next question. Explain uh, why, uh, explain what you would check if the Linux, serv uh, Linux build server suddenly gets getting slow. So uh, they have asked me like uh, in a particular situation if a Linux server build gets slow uh, Linux server gets uh, all of a sudden it gets slow and what is the troubleshooting you uh, you will be doing it so that to in order to fix that uh, issue 
so first we will be checking about the application level uh, first we will be seeing the application level troubleshooting like related to uh, whether it's related to the ram related issues or any disk uh, or the any any input uh, output read write issues or else any disk space issues etc so in secondary when we consider like uh, system level troubleshooting like we check for the logs uh, like whether it's related to the server log file or else any system performance issues or else web server log or HTTP Tomcat logs, JBoss logs, J web logic logs to see depending upon the uh, the application which is running on the particular server we see that logs so if if the application server response or the receive time is the issue for the slowness or uh, is there any me uh, memory leak in in the application and uh, we also check for the dependent services troubleshooting uh, like is there any antivirus uh, related issues or is there any firewall related issues or any networking issues or SMTP server uh, response time issues as well so moving on to the next question is like uh, what are the types of HTTP requests has been used so as, uh, as of my knowledge uh, I have only used the five of them uh, not five uh, around uh, six to seven like uh, get head put post patch delete trace connect and options so let's move on to the next question is like uh, what are the core uh, core operations of devops with application development and with infrastructure so as we all know that uh, uh, the core operations related to the application development is like uh, code building and the code coverage then followed by the unit testing and packaging and then deployment so and in terms of uh, the infrastructure we are be will be using like uh, we can mention it as uh, like uh, uh, like provisioning configuration and uh, orchestration and deployment So moving on to the next question is like uh, name a few uh, few cloud platform uh, which are used for the DevOps implementation. So as we know that the, these are the uh, whatever the familiar ones uh, like uh, the Google Cloud everyone knows and the AWS as well as Azure. Uh, so these are the th three things which I know. Uh, I have explained the same thing in the interview as well. So moving on to the next question is like what is the blue green deployment so as we all know that uh, the blue green deployment which makes sure that the application is available uh, with with the high availability like uh, application will be available even if some some changes has been pushed due to the production the production will be running on the other uh, like blue and green we are deviating into two things so when we try to push some changes into the blue blue deployment then the green will be in the available mode or once the everything has been has been committed and if it's running fine then we'll move it into the green so sorry uh, vice versa like first we'll be working on the green deployment whatever the things we want to push it into the green then we'll test it and uh, if everything works fine then we'll move, uh, move the changes to the blue by routing the traffic to the green if every uh, once the changes has been done then we'll route the uh, then we'll route the traffic again back to the blue so the same thing has been explained uh, here in 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 bit detailed uh, manner like uh, the blue and the green coloring pattern addresses the most uh, most important challenges faced during the automatic deployment process in the blue green deployment approach you need to ensure the two identical production environments however the only one in the one among them is live at any given point of time and the live environment is called as blue environment as I have already said that the blue environment is the production environment and the green is the similar uh, environment where we try to push the similar changes once and test them then later on uh, we route the traffic again back to the blue once all the changes has been moved to the blue so when the team prepares the next release for their software they conduct their final stage of testing in the environment which is known as green green environment once the uh, verified and the traffic is routed to the green green environment so the, once the all the changes has been moved moved from the green to the blue uh, then we'll route the traffic again back to the uh, blue deployment so like blue blue version where the production which is the production environment so moving on to the next question is like uh, 
uh, whether the continuous deployment is possible practically of course it's possible so uh, like uh, if everything goes fine like uh, testing deployment and uh, all are in automation the uh, automation and everything works fine then uh, the continuous deployment is always possible so uh, the same has been explained uh, in simple text uh, like uh, of course it's possible if we bring up the agility in every process of deployment and uh, development and deployment the release testing and deployment automation should be so accurately fine-tuned so why scripting uh, is why scripting useful for the bash python or any other language is must for the devops team so they asked me like uh, what is the purpose of uh, the scripting language and uh, why do we use the scripting so as everyone knows that uh, as a devops developer uh, we need to as as a devops member we need to know about um, uh, the scripting languages as uh, everyone are uh, most most of them might be familiar with the python uh, which is the easiest scripting language so uh, basically we use this scripting language is for the automation purpose if there are uh, most of uh, most of the things might not be so similar so if we want to op automate something into the tool then we make use of the script so that uh, using this once we write the script we will integrate that script with this tool so that it gets automated the same has been explained in the simple uh, simple meaning like uh, even though we have a numerous tools in the devops but there are certain custom requirements for the project in such cases we may we have to make sh make use of the scripting and then integrate it with the tools so moving on to the next question is like uh, how do you uh, how do you implement the high availability of the websites uh, so as we know that the how, how high availability can be uh, can be uh, can be we can make sure the uh, high availability by using the load balances so uh, i have answered the same thing like uh, making uh, if we have the load balances we can route the traffic to the uh, so the load balancer will be routing the traffic to the different uh, different servers so based on that uh, uh, always the always the system will be available even in case of uh, uh, we if we have the high traffic so in case of uh, uh, like uh, if we have the horizontal or the virtual scaling if we if you are using the pco for uh, the aws we'll be having uh, uh, the horizontal scaling uh, which will be used which will be bringing up the systems based upon the number of uh, requests we receive and once the re uh, request has been reduced then uh, the server uh, whatever the instances has been brought up uh, will be uh, will be again uh, brought down so i have explained the same thing in the simple manner uh, like the main concept of uh, the high, avail high availability is the is that the website should be in live all the time so we should uh, we should avoid the single point of failure in order to achieve the load balance can be used and the la and the last two last last question which has been asked in the uh, interviews like uh, mention what are the key aspects of the principles behind the devops so the principles behind the devops is for the continuous integration deployment continuous deployment automation and monitoring and the security so these are the uh, interview questions which has been asked in the round one so i'll be coming up with the round two interview questions uh, as i have cleared the round one and uh, move to the round two so what are the interview questions faced by me in the round two will be explained to you in the same manner in my upcoming video thank you all for watching please subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed yet and stay tuned